Imagine living in an era where questioning the monarchy was unthinkable and your thoughts were considered predestined. A time when dissent could lead to exile or even execution. This is the story of John Locke, a man who challenged these oppressive norms and set the stage for the rise of democratic ideals and the birth of the Enlightenment. John Locke was born in 1632 in Wrighton, Somerset. Locke's family, while sympathetic to Puritanism, maintained their affiliation with the Church of England, an influence that permeated his later life and thinking. Growing up in Pensford, near Bristol, Locke was just 10 years old when the English Civil Wars erupted between the forces of King Charles I and the parliamentary troops led by Oliver Cromwell. Locke's father served as a captain in the cavalry of the parliamentarians, participating in limited combat. From these early experiences, Locke likely developed a skepticism towards any monarch's divine right to rule. When the First Civil War concluded in 1646, Locke's academic promise enabled his father to secure him a place at Westminster School in London, where he arrived in 1647 at the age of 14. Despite the school being under the control of the new Republican government, its headmaster, Richard Busby, a noted scholar, was a royalist. Locke spent four years under Busby's strict tutelage. In January of 1649, while Locke was at Westminster, Charles I was executed just half a mile away, an event the students were not permitted to witness though they were certainly cognizant of the monumental events unfolding nearby. At Westminster, the curriculum focused on Latin, Greek, Hebrew, Arabic, mathematics, and geography. Locke was elected a King's Scholar in 1650, which brought him both academic prestige and a financial stipend that allowed him to purchase numerous classical texts in Greek and Latin. Despite being a diligent student, Locke found little enjoyment in his schooling, later criticizing boarding schools in his influential treatise, Some Thoughts Concerning Education, for their reliance on corporal punishment and the poor behavior they cultivated among students. In this work, he advocated for private tutoring as a superior method for educating young gentlemen. In the autumn of 1652, at the age of 20, John Locke entered Christ Church, Oxford, once a royalist stronghold during the Civil Wars, but by then a hub for Oliver Cromwell's Puritan followers. Cromwell served as Chancellor, with his former chaplain, John Owen, as Vice-Chancellor and Dean, both dedicated to restoring normalcy to the university. Despite these efforts, Locke found the undergraduate curriculum uninspiring. Rooted in medieval traditions, it focused heavily on Aristotle's logic, while neglecting the revolutionary ideas of knowledge posited by modern thinkers like Francis Bacon, René Descartes, and others whose works were not included in the official syllabus. However, Locke's curiosity led him to explore these contemporary writings on his own. Locke graduated with a bachelor's degree in 1656 and a master's degree two years later, subsequently being elected a student of Christ Church. During his time at Oxford, he engaged with leading figures of the New Science Movement, including Bishop John Wilkins, architect and astronomer Christopher Wren, physicians Thomas Willis and Richard Lower, physicist Robert Hooke, and notably the eminent Robert Boyle. His interactions with these intellectuals influenced him profoundly. The restoration of the English monarchy in 1660 was a turning point for John Locke. It prompted many of his scientific peers to return to London leading to the establishment of the Royal Society, 
which greatly stimulated scientific research. However, in Oxford, the newfound liberation from Puritan oversight resulted in unruly behavior and intense religious fervor among students. These excesses made Locke cautious about rapid social changes, likely influenced by his own experiences during the Civil Wars. In 1660, Locke penned two tracts on government, a conservative work advocating that the government could legislate on religious matters not crucial to Christianity's core beliefs to maintain political stability. This stance aimed at curtailing the chaos from religious differences contrasted sharply with the, his later views in Two Treatises of Government from 1689. Appointed senior censor at Christ Church in 1663, Locke oversaw undergraduate discipline and lectured, leading to his Essays on the Law of Nature. These essays outlined his early philosophical positions, notably his belief in the natural law governing human ethics and the empiricist view that all knowledge, including moral insight, is acquired through experience, not innate. These foundational ideas would anchor his later philosophical and political theories. In 1666, John Locke was introduced to Lord Anthony Ashley Cooper, later the first Earl of Shaftesbury, through a mutual acquaintance. Recognizing Locke's potential, Ashley invited him to join his London household as his aide and personal physician. Despite Locke's lack of a medical degree, Ashley, a prominent Whig leader and advocate for constitutional monarchy, Protestant secession, civil liberty, religious tolerance, parliamentary rule, and England's economic expansion found in Locke a like-minded intellectual ally. Locke quickly became integral to Ashley's political and personal life, drafting documents on toleration and performing a critical medical procedure on Ashley by inserting a silver tube into his liver tumor significantly easing his condition. Locke's relationship with Ashley also extended to his becoming a fellow of the Royal Society in 1668 and collaborating on medical research with Thomas Sydenham, the era's leading physician. This partnership, though Locke was the junior partner, was marked by a focus on empirical observation, reinforcing Locke's commitment to philosophical empiricism. Beyond medicine, Ashley appointed Locke as secretary to the Lords Proprietors of Carolina, leading to Locke's involvement in drafting the fundamental constitutions for the government of Carolina, which advocated for religious freedom, excluding only atheists. In 1672, Ashley was ennobled as the first Earl of Shaftesbury and appointed as Lord Chancellor of England, but his tenure was brief as he quickly fell out of favor with Charles II. Facing potential danger, Locke traveled to France in 1675, by then a holder of a medical degree from Oxford and appointed to a medical studentship at Christ Church. He spent nearly four years in France, dividing his time between Paris and Montpellier drawn to Montpelier's renowned medical school and sizable Protestant community. During his stay, Locke engaged with leading Protestant intellectuals and explored the works of French Catholic philosophers, but his focus predominantly lay on medical pursuits, deeply noting the stark poverty in France compared to England's relative prosperity. Locke's journals from this period filled with observations and philosophical musings later contributed to his seminal An Essay Concerning Human Understanding. Meanwhile, back in England, Shaftesbury faced imprisonment and was only released in 1678, regaining favor as Lord President 
of the Privy Council by the time Locke returned in 1679. The political climate was tumultuous, embroiled in the exclusion controversy to prevent Charles II's Catholic brother, James, from ascending to the throne, a cause both Shaftesbury and Locke fervently supported amid the frenzied backdrop of the so-called Popish Plot, which falsely alleged a Catholic plot to overthrow the king. When Shaftesbury could not mediate between the king and parliament, he was dismissed. In 1681, he was arrested and later acquitted of treason, but he fled to Holland in 1682, where he died a year later. The political climate in England grew increasingly hostile for Shaftesbury's associates, prompting John Locke to flee to Holland in September 1683. During this turbulent period, Locke composed his seminal Two Treatises of Government, published in 1689. Although the exact timing of its writing is debated, it is agreed that it was largely completed before his departure. The two treatises responded to England's exclusion crisis, but aimed to justify the broader principles of the glorious revolution. Locke's political philosophy was deeply intertwined with his religious beliefs. He maintained that humans, created by God, are endowed with reason to discover divine laws and fulfill their duties for eternal salvation. He believed in natural law, synonymous with God's law, in which humans could reason and recognize moral obligations, like caring for offspring and honoring contracts. His philosophy, fundamentally Protestant, inherently opposed Roman Catholicism, particularly after the revocation of the Edict of Nantes by Louis XIV in 1685, fearing it threatened English sovereignty. John Locke stayed in Holland until the Glorious Revolution overthrew James II. In February of 1689, he returned to England with the party accompanying the soon-to-be Queen Mary II. Back home, Locke engaged in political endeavors such as drafting the English Bill of Rights, although the final version passed by Parliament did not fully reflect his views on religious toleration. Declining a senior diplomatic offer due to his poor health, Locke often struggled with London's smoky environment. He gladly accepted an invitation from his close friend and fellow philosopher Damaris Masham to reside with her family in Oates, Essex. In his final years, Locke revised his works, entertained friends like Isaac Newton, and engaged with critics. His health continued to decline, and he passed away while Damaris read him the Bible, later being buried in High Laver Church. <laughs>